Hey y'all, so I thought I'd try this whole get ready with me thing over again. If you didn't see my last get ready with me, it ended very eventfully. I'll leave it at that. But I did check the weather, no tornadic activity or supercells heading their way to me today. Although it is really cloudy and rainy, so not the best lighting, but no tornadoes, so that's good. So I do, kind of as usual, already have my foundation done. It just takes so long, um, and my skin was really bad. It's starting to clear up now, thank God, and I have a dermatologist appointment on Tuesday, so hopefully that'll go well. But I'm still kind of dealing with the aftermath, and so, it, you know, honestly, if I, like, do foundation, like, try to cover everything, it takes, like, 30 minutes to do all that. So maybe that's, like, a separate video on its own, how I cover up all that stuff, but... Oh my god, it would make this video two hours long. Anyway, so I did It Cosmetic CC Cream because I did actually get a little bit of sun, which is good. And then uh, Urban Decay Correctors in Mint and Pink. Um, the pink one I've been using as concealer because I'm so freaking pink anyways. And I did order, sorry, got to adjust. I did order um, the Urban Decay Concealer, the regular concealer. So I'm going to test that out. I haven't been able to find a good concealer in a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I set it with a Cover FX matte setting powder. And this I finally used up. This is what I use for primer. It's the Cover FX mattifying primer. This is like the small size. I think it's $16 at Sephora. So I did use that up. This was in my project pan. So this makes two items down. I already used up the Couture La La perfume. So yay, two items down. And I think I have a couple more really close to being finished, so I'm going to give a little sneak peek in that too. Okay, so I'm, I guess I'm just going to go in and contour with Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder in Medium, which I use, like, it's the only contour powder I have. I do have a bronzer. I have the Chocolate Soleil, which I use, you know, just like quick, like boop boop, brush it on, and I'm good to go, but when I really want to do my makeup, it's this every single time so much so so much this is something I will probably buy for the rest of my life and then my oh, it cosmetics flawless blush brush number 227 I love angled blush blush brushes so I would love to get some more it cosmetics brushes I think they're amazing so just a little bit expensive anyway so yeah I'm just gonna contour a little bit so since that uh, since that get ready with me with all the tornadic activity I've been watching a bunch of documentaries which I love documentaries I think that's my favorite type of movie I really do I don't um I'm not really into going to the movies I'd rather do like a red box or Netflix and watch at home in my underwear instead of having to like go to a crowded movie theater and then I can eat whatever I want and I don't know I just prefer it stop the movie whenever I want get up go to the bathroom um, so yeah, I love watching documentaries, and I've been watching a bunch of tornado documentaries too, and, um, like the one about the Moore and Joplin EF5 in 2013. I know, I know I've talked to some of y'all who live in Oklahoma, and oh my god, like I live in North Texas, we get it, and we've had some bad tornadoes, but oh my lord, y'all, I don't know how you deal with it, I really don't. Moore just gets hit about every three years by an EF5, and it is just, is heartbreaking. And um, so it was the same storm that, that um, produced the EF5 that hit Moore, Oklahoma. Same storm moved on and hit Joplin. And they were talking about the differences because in, uh, in Moore, it killed about 30 people. In Joplin, it killed about 130 people. Same size tornado, both EF5, same storm, everything. Um, but the difference is, and this is what I, you know, kind of believe, you know, when I hear people say, like, why do you live in Tornado Alley? It's your fault. That's, just, you're just asking for it, blah, blah, blah. Why would anyone live there? First of all, there is no exemption from Mother Nature, no matter where you live. You live in California, there's earthquakes and mudslides. You know, Florida, hurricanes. Even, you know, up the, um, like, upper seaboard, northern seaboard, whatever that's called. New York, Maryland, Virginia, all in there. You get hurricanes. And tornadoes can really, they can go anywhere. Um, so there is just no exemption from Mother Nature, no matter where you live, first of all. But um, they were saying the difference, basically, and I do believe this, the reason why so many more lives were saved and more is because the people who live here, the people who live in Tornado Alley, 
we're used to it. We know how to handle it and we have the storm shelters and the cellars and things like that, safe rooms built into our houses. I don't, not anymore. We used to, in our old house, we used to have a storm cellar, actually in a couple of houses that we've lived in, all outside. We never, my aunt had one in like her, it was in like a hallway underneath the carpet, but We've never had one in our house, but we've always had them outside. But more than that, we just, we've grown up with it. We know, we just know, we have a healthy fear and respect for the storms and for Mother Nature. And so we don't test it. We don't, you know, we get to cover. We heed tornado warnings. We don't play around. We know what to do. Um, and so we just, I, I think that contributes a lot to survival. Today's clean hair day. I wash my hair every Friday night. I know that's like my big event on Friday night. Yeah, I, I live a really exciting life. I wash my hair on Friday nights. Honestly though, I just don't, I don't like to do anything. You know, I work a lot. And so when I come home on Fridays, that's just like my chill day. Like Saturday night, yeah, sure. I'll go out, have fun, but Fridays, I just wanna chill. I don't mind if people come over or whatever, but I'm not going out. I'm not like getting all dressed up, no. I wash my hair and relax. And believe me, washing my hair is a task. You know, it's not like a simple, easy little thing to do. I only wash my hair once a week. I think, honestly, that's a reason why it grows so long. And your hair gets used to it. It doesn't, mine really doesn't get greasy until like Friday. I don't need to wash it anymore. <laughs> All right, and I'm going to contour a little bit under my chin, too. Oh, it's so funny to see. I was looking at my driver's license picture for some reason. Oh, because I was doing my taxes. And um, my driver's license picture is from when I was 18 years old. I haven't had to get it changed yet, so I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to go to the DMV when I don't have to. I can just do it online. But uh, it's just so funny to see... You know, 18 is still really young. I still kind of had like my baby fat on me and my face was so round. My face used to be so round and it wasn't until I kind of got older and kind of thinned out and leaned out that um, I really started having like bone structure and cheeks and everything like that. It used to just be a little round ball. I think that's pretty good. It's pretty well blended. Yeah, it's good enough. I don't, you know, I've messed around with contouring my nose, but I have such a little, like, I have like a little Michael Jackson nose anyways. It's so sharp, you know what I mean? It's so, like, turned up and sharp that if I contour it, I feel like I look like a rat or something like that, you know what I mean? It's just too, it's too sharp. So, you know, like, the contours it has is enough already. I don't need my nose to look, like, more structured and more pointed that's just not the look that I want and you know furthermore like not everyone needs to contour at all or everything you know what I mean like if you already have like incredibly high structured cheekbones that's what contouring is for is to give you those so if you already have them you know I mean do what you want obviously but if you already have them it looks you know just more harsh etc more um more masculine and I personally I mean this is just me everyone wants their makeup differently but I and kind of everything that I do I mean even like styling my hair the clothes that I wear I just like a really feminine look um like really girly I'm a girly girl and so I don't want anything too like harsh or structured or anything like that so I do try to I don't know keep it softer maybe okay what are we gonna do next I keep going back and forth on the eye look I want to do. I really want to play around with the blue in my Lorac Pro Metal palette because I haven't found a way to wear it that I just love it yet. Um, but I don't know. But I also really wanted to do, like, what was it that I saw that I just absolutely loved? It was just like a huge graphic wing liner and just really simple eyes. So I've been kind of going back and forth on those two trying to decide what I wanted to do. Let me grab some blush. Hold on. I think I just want to go like really, really simple and I'm just going to do one of my Bare Minerals blushes in first class and it's just like a super neutrally pink. I think that's, you know, I don't know. I, I don't want to do anything over the top if I'm going to go real over the top on the eyes. So I want to keep it kind of simple. So this is my Laura Geller highlighter that I'm trying to pan and my current project pan. I'll give you a little sneak peek, but it's this one right here and you can tell I am making some decent progress. I'm trying to focus on this bottom quarter over here. 
So yeah, making some decent progress. It's absolutely beautiful, but you know, it's one of the oldest ones I've had, I've ha I have, and it takes up a lot of room. So anyways, and I was never crazy about the eyeshadows, and I'm still not, except this lilac purple color here, I tried as a highlight, and oh my god, is it beautiful. Like I have to be light handed with it otherwise it looks like I have purple eyeshadow on my cheeks but when I am light handed with it it's like the most beautiful iridescent purple and I think it was the Jeffree Star highlighters because he's coming out with like mint green and rose gold and lilac and all these beautiful colors. So if you have something like this give it a try or any other colors like very faint I don't know kind of bold pastel colors give them a try on your cheeks because oh my god I was just floored. It's very subtle and I've also kind of mixed it back and forth between the two you know just to not just to tone it down a little bit but I have absolutely loved it. I do want to pick up some of the pink because I just don't I don't want to overload it or anything. Okay this side. All right and take a look at this. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. I do think on um, very golden or incredibly deep skin tones, doing a very icy purple like this would probably just look very ashy. Um, but on fair skin tones, I think it would be very pretty. So I'm going to move on to brows. And I went back and forth on whether or not I wanted to use my new ColourPop pencil. But I'm going to use my Tarte one. And I do need to use it up because there is only a small amount left in there. And then I'll probably move on to the ColourPop one. But I just like it better. I really do. And given the choice with them both sitting side by side, I'm always going to pull for this one. So, um, yeah, it's just the way it is. I love this one a lot more. I'm struggling a little bit with the ColourPop one, but I'll probably end up using that one, you know, during the work week, things like that, when I just need to slap on some makeup. Although, when I am really in a hurry, brows, it, are, they're not a necessity for me. That's not something that I feel like I have to do. To look presentable or whatever like look you know I'm fine without them um, foundation though <laughs> that's another story anyways so I did order a backup of the Tarte one this is how much I have left so not an incredible amount and this actually goes pretty fast too that's probably five applications max um, so I did order another one of these um, from Sephora for the VIB sale so have y'all been tempted I know you have because it, it's hard not to be. And I also got the Ulta 20% off coupon right about the same time. I think their sale ended like right when the VIB one started. So I did order, but I, I did really good. You know, my baskets, I, I'm not going to lie, I probably had, you know, $500 worth of items combined in both of my Ulta and my Sephora baskets, um, but I got it down a lot. I didn't spend more than 200 total on both, both combined. Um, at Ulta, because it was 20% off, I got a few things that I could have got at Sephora, but I got them at Ulta because I could get more of a discount. Although I'm trying to limit my spending anywhere but Sephora, and I've done a really good job. So yeah, I've spent a decent amount at Sephora, but this time, by this time last year, you know, I made platinum at Ulta. I spent a crap ton at Sephora, and I bought from so many department stores. I bought from Macy's, Blo uh, Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom's, um, Lord and Taylor. There's other ones, too, I know I bought from. Like, I bought from a bunch of places. And not to mention the drugstore. I was buying drugstore left and right. And I have not bought makeup anywhere or skincare. Nothing. Nothing anywhere but Sephora and a very, very small amount at Ulta. I'm going to lose my platinum status at Ulta this year, and I really could care less. So it's taken me so by surprise. The, the whole, like, hitting 10K and then right after I hit 10k I hit 11k and now I'm about to hit 12k and it's like I haven't even had time to catch my breath and you know I, I've been thinking like you know should I do a thank you video or something like that like what do I want to do for this milestone and I'm just so I'm so overwhelmed by it I just don't even know what to say you know obviously so incredibly grateful and thankful that so many people like voted yes on me you know what I mean I just 
I almost don't want to believe it. Like, I almost, I'm waiting for everyone to be like, haha, just kidding. You know what I mean? Because it just, it doesn't feel real. And besides that, I'm absolutely terrified of letting people down and not creating good content. And it just, it scares me a little bit if I'm being honest with you. I just, I want to do my best. I want to make people proud. I want to make people happy. And I don't know. So it's just been something on my mind and I didn't know quite how to like, there is no way to say thank you. There is no way that I can truly express how I feel inside. And oh, it just, it's overwhelming to think about sometimes because, you know, I definitely, I don't have a million subscribers, but I have, you know, I'm going to freaking cry. I have 12,000 of the strongest women I have ever met in my life. And it just blows my mind where, where all of y'all have come from. You know what I mean? And I so wish that you were here in my real life. I, like, I wish you were physically here that I could see what I mean. I'm going to cry. I cry every time I think about it because it's just so overwhelming. Oh my God. It's just the most amazing people that I have ever I don't know what I did. <laughs> I don't know what I did to be so lucky to be able to create these friendships with y'all. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't deserve it. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's so many more deserving people who have done so much more in, to make this world a better place. Oh my God, it just blows my mind. Anyways, oh, okay, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. So anyways, I'm just so grateful for everyone who have, has been watching my videos and who watched the Sweet Peach palette that just blew up more than my wildest dreams could ever comprehend. And, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful even to the people who didn't like it because, basically because I ended up owing on my taxes this year. It's, well, it's not a long story. It's just a whole lot of parts to it. One is Obamacare. It's the first time I work for a small business and they don't offer insurance. So I had to get Obamacare and I was also unemployed for the first two months of 2015. I made a video about a long, long time ago. I lost my job in like two weeks before Christmas in 2014. I'd never been on unemployment before. I didn't know. I should have asked my dad, but I didn't have withholding taking it, taken out of it. Um, and then I also cashed in the 401k from that past job and so I had to owe tax at 10% on that um, so basically it came to not only am I not going to get a tax return this year but I'm going to end up owing and so the revenue the ad revenue from that which I haven't gotten yet but I will get and it's going to be so helpful it it just could not have come at a more perfect time and I'm so grateful for every single click and it's just just thank you. Thank you so much. Whether you like the video or not, you made my life a lot easier. You really did. I'm so glad I didn't like budget for that tax return. I'm so glad I, I'm so glad I didn't like, oh, I'm going to go on a shopping sp spree at Sephora. Eh, I'll get a tax return because that didn't happen. So, and I didn't owe, I mean, it, it was a chunk of money, but oops, wrong end. It was a chunk of money, but it could have been way, way worse. So it was definitely, you know, doable. But without that, if I wouldn't have had that, you know, the ad revenue from that video blowing up, I, it would be, I'd be in a different spot right now. And I feel like the tide is turning and I feel like so many people are sick of just the rampant consumerism um, that YouTube has become. And there's nothing wrong with buying things that you love and enjoy and treating yourself and this is the way I see it at least I, I work hard and I do want to enjoy the money that I make and I do and I do buy myself ni myself nice things and I do treat myself and I get pedicures and things like that and treat myself but there's it comes to a certain point where I just can't justify it it comes to a point where I look at everything sitting literally right here in front of me and I have so much that I feel like this is a situation where I'm being tested by God. And I feel like it's one of those situations where I'm going to get to the pearly gates and God is going to be like, are you, are you serious, Jacqueline? You needed another $50 eyeshadow. How many eyeshadow palettes did you have again? And you needed that last one? Hmm. And I just, and I feel the same way about like my tooth. Like my mom tells me all the time, why don't you just get Invisalign? It'll fit. I have one tooth, this one right here, that's, 
turn just a little bit. And if it wasn't for that, my smile would be absolutely perfect. I don't have anything else out of place. I could get a porcelain veneer on my fake one. I have a fake tooth. This one right here is fake. I knocked it out when I was like seven years old. I cannot justify spending $1,200 to turn a tooth, you know, five degrees this way, to give myself a perfect smile when... There are children who, who are going to die today because they don't have clean drinking water. Like I do, I feel like that's one of those situations where I'm going to get up to heaven one day and God's going to be like, really? You had to turn your tooth five degrees when, you know, 26,000 children die every day from preventable diseases? Couldn't give that, you couldn't give a hundred bucks to that? I don't know, I just... There comes a point when you have so much that collecting more... And just bringing more in and spending more and more and more just almost seems sinful to me. You know what I mean? And so I can't, I can't justify, I can't do it. I don't want to be, you know, a glutton or something like that. You know what I mean? Um, because I know, you know, I am not like some billionaire, millionaire, anything like that. But I am so lucky and so blessed. And most of us here really are. Um, I mean... On my salary that I make, I'm richer than 99% of this world. Most of this world lives on a dollar a day. And it's just, I'm, I'm very, very lucky and very, very blessed. And most of us here are. You know, if we have internet and smartphones and a roof over our heads and food in our bellies, we're richer than the majority of this world. I so did not mean for this to turn into like me preaching or anything like that. But it's how I feel. I do feel that... I just can't, I can't justify it all. Let's try to talk about something a little bit more positive too. Sorry, I'm not trying to get up on my soapbox or anything like that. It just comes out sometimes. You know, furthermore, I'll just finish the statement. You know, I will say this, like, I don't care if people think like, oh, you know, I've seen a couple of comments like, I shouldn't have any money or anything like that. I would prefer people to think that I'm broke. I learned at a very, very young age that the more money you have and the more flashy you are, the more you show how much you have. A, people who have, people who truly have money don't need to show it off. They, they have nothing to prove to anyone. And two, the more money people think you have, the more things people think you have, the more of a target you have on your back. And that is something that I know to be a fact. I would rather people think that I am flat broke and I don't have a damn thing because that means no one's gonna mess with me and no one's gonna try to take anything from me. So, I don't care if people think if I have money or not, I don't give a shit. Besides, I don't have anything. I don't have anything anyone w would wanna take from me anyways and I, that's the way I wanna keep it. My, um, my great grandparents were robbed and nearly murdered. They were beat halfway to death. Um, because of my uncle, my uncle, their son, um, at some bar bragging about everything they had, set him up and his friend, he left and his friend told him exactly where they lived. And, uh, it wouldn't have been for him bragging about everything he had. They, I mean, they nearly lost their lives. My, my great grandfather ended up having a lot of surgeries and they told, they told my nanny Brumball that if they, she couldn't get her wedding ring off, that they were going to cut her finger off. And uh, I'm telling you, they were scared. They put a sheet over them. Um, they made them sit on the bed and put a sheet over them, and they thought they were going to kill them. So, you know, the blood wouldn't splatter everywhere. Uh, they probably were. And I don't know what made them change their mind, but they didn't. They ended up dying, though. That's a story I need to tell y'all. They were killed by the Texas Rangers. Shot them to death. So, that's what you get. <laughs> they came down, I think it was from Tennessee, something like that, came down from Tennessee to commit that robbery. So let's finally move on to eyes. I have been really wanting to use Cobalt from the Lorac Pro Metal palette. I have not figured out how I want to use this shade yet. And so I thought about kind of dabbling with it, trying it out today and see what happens. I thought it'd be really pretty to mix kind of with like a silvery, I don't know, chromey kind of color and then kind of fade it into the blue. I don't know. We will see. I'm going to play around with it. This is going to be kind of experimental, not like some like 
I don't know, well rehearsed something or other. No, not like that. So we will see how it goes. Okay, so I didn't do much while my battery was charging. I just, I can't exactly remember where I left off, but um, let me just briefly go over what I did on my eyes. I just did linen all over to set the primer. I did latte in the crease, and then I did corduroy in the outer V, and then lower lash line as well. So nothing too harsh. I may have wanted to go a little darker on the outer V. I don't know. I can always go back and add a little bit if the blue starts to overwhelm it. So we will see. So what I'm going to do is take vanilla from my Mega Pro and do inner corner and kind of not just inner corner but kind of inner third as well. Alrighty, let's go in with the blue. Let's hope I don't mess this up. I really don't want to mess this up but you know what it's not it, whatever happens it's not going to be a mess up because I haven't used this yet and I need to find a way that I like it and that I can use it so it's going to be a learning experience no matter what happens yay positive way to look at it all right I'm just going to go in with a um, this is my Too Faced teddy bear hair brush I, I have the little set I think they have a couple of different sets I have the little three-piece set and I love it I use them like every day some of my favorite brushes let's do this oh god I'm kind of nervous to be honest with you I need to get my mirror closer this is gonna need some precision okay gonna kind of gently pat it in sorry if I'm gonna go silent here for a little bit not used to working with bold colors and this is even kind of a muted blue it's not like it's an electric blue but that's what I mean I don't do hardly anything but neutrals I mean, you know me I do like a soft shimmery light color on the lid every single day okay so I switched it up a little bit and I just wasn't liking the way it was turning out just way too bold and it is really bold I now have essentially a smoky eye which was not the look I was going for but that's just kind of what happened this color is really really dark um, it is very blue though it's very distinctly blue um, so yeah I, I just ended up doing the whole lid filling in that inner third too and then adding vanilla right in the center to kind of pop and give it more dimension and then some blue on the lower lash line and then adding some black in the outer outer corner to give it a little bit more dimension. It just looked like Mimi blue eyeshadow. You know what I mean? Like all the way across. So I'm not the biggest fan. I'm really not, but I mean, it looks, it looks okay. Like it's decent enough. It doesn't look like a total shit show, but it's just really dark. And I honestly just don't like super, super dark. That's just not, it's just, I don't know. It's just not what I'm into. Just seems to make my eyes smaller or something. I don't know. I don't know just not my thing too dramatic or something like that so all right I'm gonna do the other one and I'll be right back I uh I look like I'm going to the club I really do you know I mean it's not it's not horrible or anything like that I just I couldn't tell you the last time I did a smoky eye it's just not not really what I'm into not my style it's just uh hey, it's just kind of heavy I don't know so um, I guess I'll just tell you what I finished up with. Obviously did cobalt all over the lids and then took vanilla, which is that lighter shade from the uh, Mega Pro, <clears throat> and put it in the center to kind of give it some dimension and then just did some liquid liner. I feel like it needed it to kind of ground it or something like that. Anyway, so I'm just going to finish up with some Buxom Lash Mascara. Thank you so much to everyone who recommended this. I absolutely love this mascara. It's not... You know, there's other mascaras that have given me more length, but this defines them really well, and I really appreciate that. So I do really, really like it. I love these type of brushes. I love the plastic brushes. Um, it separates my lashes really well, and I like a lot of lashes, and I like them really long. Honestly, I think for lips, I'm just going to go super simple and nude. My L'Oreal Jennifer's Nude, which I am trying to pan as well, and which I have done a pretty good job. That is all I have left. That little nubbin it is ever though I thought I'd be done with it by now but I think one more week one more week and I should be done with this okay so that is the final look I feel like I need to put a cocktail dress on not freaking leggings it's a little over the top to just go have dinner with my family 
anyways <laughs> but I did enjoy hanging out like that's what's most important and I got to try that shadow out I've been really wanting to do it because I haven't quite figured out how I wanted to use it honestly now I may never use it again because this is not it's not my favorite look it's just too strong for me some people and I see this on Instagram and stuff like that the girls who do these like super glam looks and they just seem to be able to pull it off like no other but when I do something super glam one I find it more difficult to do okay because I'm just not a makeup artist and two I just don't honestly I don't feel as confident as I do when I have more natural makeup on and less coverage and less I don't know it just seems a little over the top for me um, so I don't know I just I don't know it just seems a little over the top on the eyes for me I mean I like it I like it it's just a little bit stronger than I was hoping for I don't know what I was looking for I guess I what I wanted was like kind of a silvery shimmery with blue accents and this is like smoky blue eye you know what I mean so but that's what it is it's makeup it washes off you get to play with it and that's what I wanted to do I love doing this style of video though because I love I mean I do jack chats and stuff like that where I just sit down and talk but I love to like get ready at the same time, you know, kind of accomplish two things at the same time. I don't know. I think they're really, really fun. So I love to just sit down and talk about stuff that's going on in my life or stuff I think that y'all would be interested in, etc. And I don't know, it's just a fun way to do it. Anyways, I am starving, so I need to get dressed and go because I want to go eat. I'm so hungry. But I will see you guys in a couple of days. Let me know if you know of a better way to use blues because I'm really struggling here. Love y'all, and remember that you are already famous right where you are in your hometown. Love y'all. Bye.